So as I said, my name is Christian Macker. I'm the head of middle school um, humanities at Brighton Grammar School. Uh, this is my second year at Brighton Grammar, and I know my age um, doesn't suggest, but I've been teaching for 15 um, years. Well, my hair, sorry. My hair suggests otherwise. Um, so today, I know we've all been doing John Hattie's Visible Learning, and uh, two parts to the presentation today. Uh, the part one is just to summarise the key changes to humanities uh, under the Victorian curriculum itself. So subject areas of hist history, geography, economics and business, and civics and citizenship. And the second one is just to talk about the humanities uh, textbooks that are, um, will be available at the end of or the next couple of months, um, very shortly, um, for you to have a look through and uh, hopefully engage your students in the classroom. So there, there is a show bag I know that you've got there. There's a series of handouts. There's a summary of key changes um, for the Victorian curriculum. And there's also sample chapters of seven, eight, nine, and 10. And they're chapters from each of the different four key subject areas. And there's also a table of contents from the big Oxford series. I just um, started doing some writing uh, for Oxford just this year. And I've used Oxford previously, but I've used competitors before. And I feel that Oxford are really surpassed. And this is why you know, I'm speaking here today, because I feel like it's a really good product to use in the classroom. And hopefully you agree as well. Can I just see a show of hands if you're using Oxford at the moment at all? Okay, so it looks like half, um, maybe another competitor. Hopefully we can change your mind. This is not a, a sales pitch itself. And, and again, I know that uh, this is the first time this year being um, head of a department that I've been able to create change. And um, look, I hold my integrity very high. So I've done lots of research and looked at other competitors and so on. And it's not just because I was working, I was asked to write a, a chapter for Oxford. I just feel like it's the best product that's out there at the moment. So ready for more change? I hope so. And I know that I can remember, what was it, six or seven years ago, probably a little bit more, when the Australian curriculum came out. And now Victorian curriculum comes out again. And it's like, as a teacher, we all say, another change. And, and again, I think change is constant. As I think as we know in, in humanities, change is always ongoing. Um, and I, I think one of the key points is we can view it as a, a threat or an opportunity. And I, I feel that Victorian curriculum is an opportunity. Um, I spoke at the Oxford conference as well and, and presented a workshop similar to this as well. And Tony Robbins um, was mentioned. Um, we had Chura Pitt speaking at that presentation. If you had a, have a chance to go to an Oxford conference, please do so. We had uh, Chura Pitt and Ando speak. And they were you know, just amazing people. Just their, 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 um, their lifestyles and, and careers have just been inspirational. But Tony Robbins was brought up by uh, um, Churia. But change will not occur or will not last unless it is perceived as change for the good. So hopefully with, with the, the Victorian curriculum being introduced, we see the changes as good. I, I think it's really important, and, and again, being a head of department, that you, and again, you might be a head of department here or just a teacher, but it's really important that all stakeholders um, with this change um, agree to what's happening. Um, so have a discussion of why we're we making the changes going forward build the will to change and create a shared vision. I mean, I, I work at an independent school and I know that I've got the luxury of using Australian curriculum or the Victorian curriculum or blending both. Um, I'll certainly be using the Victorian curriculum as a, a framework and I know that some of you might be restricted by what you're able to use. You have to use Victorian curriculum. You're mandated by um, that. But um, again, I feel like the Victorian curriculum is a refined product of the Australian curriculum, and I think there's some really good additions there, which we'll talk about tonight. Um, I, I think it's just a, it's a joint partnership. In your team, I, I really hold strongly that a, a team um, is a really important part of the school. There's not a, I don't think you can be an individual and be a teacher. I, um, I know that happens, but I think if you're part of a team that you can have a really strong um, foundation for your students going forward. So, uh, just going over, I know this is on the handout there and I'm not going to repeat word for word what's there, but the, the key change is, um, is that we're now organised into two year levels, levels 7 and 8, levels 9 and 10, rather than year levels um, 7, 8, 9 and 10. And, and I know that's thrown up some, some possibilities that you could have potentially all year 7 history, um, 
sorry, seven and eight being taught in the one year, you could have history. Um, I, I feel like a student develops over a period of time and I think you, uh, at the moment at Brighton Grammar we have semester-based history, semester-based geography and we swap over and that's, um, I'll continue that way. But it does allow some flexibility to change things up a little bit. Um, the third dot point there, subject areas now organised into strands and substrands that take place. Um, terminology changes, depth studies versus studies, learning areas versus disciplines. So there, there's just some minor little refinements going on with the curriculum. Um, concepts and skills have been combined and in many cases changed. So there's a, a focus there on the skills changes. So civics and citizenship. Um, and, and again, uh, my school, Brighton Grammar, we uh, have uh, civics and citizenship in 9 and 10. We don't have a big focus in 7 and 8. But there's certainly some areas like government and democracy I feel like we can use in year seven and eight. Um, I mean, we teach in history ancient Rome, um, ancient Greek, and we look at political institutions and so on. So there are certainly some key areas there of government and democracy that I can incorporate into the history curriculum um, rather than finding another textbook that might uh, link up. Similarly as well, our year eight English are doing Hunger Games and the Giver and they're looking at political systems as well. Um, so the ideas of democracy and laws, laws and citizens, I think, incorporates that as well, where maybe your English faculty could use part of that textbook as well. So again, under the bottom there is um, a summary of specific changes by level. Please refer to the handout provided in your show bag. Economics and business, um, levels 7 and 8 and levels 9 and 10. So those are the strands that are now being incorporated. And again, um, 9 and 10 is where we have the economics and business taking pl place, levels seven and eight, we don't at the moment. But again, I know there is some financial well-being, which is really important. We have a um, our well-being program at the school. And I feel like there's an opportunity there to bring in some of these strands into um, you know, other disciplines as well, other uh, curriculum areas. Um, geography there, there are some content dot points have been updated. A number of elaborations have been updated and clarified. So again, just a lot more refinement going on. History, history is probably the key area that we see uh, more change, even though it's not significant, as in the whole uh, curriculum has changed. There certainly has been some additions there. Um, and I, I think going back to why perhaps we should be following the Victorian curriculum is that this key study, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and cultures, I think that's really been lacking. Um, in the past, and I'm really excited about teaching that going forward. Um, you know, there's been that little section in Year 7 where we looked at Mungo Man and Mungo Lady, but I feel like there's so much more that we should be doing um, in Level 7 and 8 with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders, um, peoples and cultures. So these are the, the learning outcomes that are there. I won't read all those. Um, there's two more there. But uh, again, I'm really excited about teaching that going forward. So Oxford have... Um, been very fortunate and, and I suppose it's been largely due to the, the team there but been working hard to get um, Indigenous um, groups to come and work on that chapter which will be in the, the Year 7 and 8 uh, Humanities textbook. So there's a, they've done a lot of a great work um, and it's all very relevant to this uh, into Victoria, the state itself. So there's some dot points there. There's some global information about all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples um, in the Year 7, the climate maps, timelines, climate graphs, language group maps. Chapter 8 as well, there's some specific information there about the local area. So if you're teaching, of course, here in Victoria, there'll be a lot of relevant information that you can relate that to the students. And there, there's a map there of um, the Wurundjeri group and, and again how that obviously um, is spread out across there. So hopefully that makes it really relevant to the students going forward. So as I said, I'm really excited about this area. Um, so there's what's out, there's the study is deleted, there's the all overviews, investigating the ancient par, um, past, all content now part of concepts and skills, strand and conservation element, elements, so it's all been incorporated into those ancient civilization areas. The Black Death, some content now part of medieval Europe, Renaissance Italy, Ottomans and Mongols. So we've been teaching that before. Um, there's been some incorporation there into some other areas. 
Uh, studies reorganised the European and Mediterranean world, the Asia-Pacific world, expanding contact, uh, contacts, discovery and exploration. So I've got there just highlighted, you now only have a choice between Renaissance Italy or Spanish conquest of the Americas. So again, that's a little bit of a change there that um, you'll, you'll come across. Um, and in year 10, or level 10, uh, political crisis have been adding, added as well. And these are learning outcomes that are there. So post-World War II. And these are some elaborations which tell a little bit more detail. Um, I know that's on your PowerPoint slide, a bit more information that you can look at. Uh, studies deleted in 9 and 10, progressive ideas and movements, movement of peoples, and studies renamed Making a Nation is now Australia, 1750 to 1918. So just again, just some little tweaks that are, that are taking place in Victoria curriculum. Again, just liken it to a, a car or a house, just refining the, the product. So this is the publications that will be out. Um, again, they're very out sh very shortly. Um, probably being published at the moment in the next month. But um, the top there are the uh, Oxford Big, I Big Ideas Humanities. So this is basically a four in one. And again, I said to you before, I, I could keep going with Australian curriculum, but I'll be going with Victorian curriculum. And this is the textbooks that I'll be using um, up the top there, the four in one. Again, I was speaking to you about how I can incorporate um, economics and business and civics and citizenship into other areas. So seven, eight, nine, ten are at the top there. Geography itself, if you are a teacher of geography and you, um, you know, have it for a whole year, you can teach, um, have that geography textbook by itself. Um, and then the history there as well, that's a straight history. And I'll talk about what's in the different chapters in a moment. The bottom uh, book here, publication, is a, a year nine and ten, economics and business, civics and citizenship there. I know the information is in your handout there. But again, for value, you'd probably be saying that the top row there would be um, the better value for you if you were to choose that textbook. I've got those, I should have gone through those. Um, there are some purchasing options at each year level, which we'll talk about <coughs> later on, but certainly student book, and there's an O book um, where you have an electronic version as well. We've just gone through a big review about um, where you had the boys using laptops and they had e-books and a, a digital, um, platform, we didn't have a hard copy, and after research and the boys and parents and so on, it was quite rigorous, we went through, we just found that we needed a hard copy textbook, and I know lots of um, heads are nodding. So we've gone down the path of getting the hard copy textbook and then having the access. I mean, there's still lots of students who want that um, ability to look um, electronically on a screen, they prefer it, but I think there's probably a in, in my school, at least in year, say, year seven and eight, there'd be a 60 to 40 preference to a hard copy textbook. Um, so we're likening to having the hard copy textbook, keeping it at school, and then they can use the electronic version at home. Can I just ask, with the current books, some of the chapters aren't in the actual textbook, you can only get them online. Is that happening with the new version as well? Yeah, so the... Um, the four in one, there are some chapters just because the size will only be in an O-book, but I'll show you what's <coughs> left out. Um, whereas history, you'd get all the textbooks, uh, sorry, all the chapters in the history and same as geography. So there is um, a compromise for the four in one, but there's only some minor things that have been taken out. So I'll, t I'll show you that on a slide in a moment. Um, so this is the seven, the ten, again, great photos that have been put, uh, covers on the humanities. This is the four in one I'm talking to you about, textbook. Um, so again, it's part one, geography, part two, history, economics and business and civics and citizenship. Uh, there might be some, I know there are some um, proofs that are over here, which I'll just run over and grab one. So it won't be as big as this, and, it, and again, it won't be as heavy as that. This is the, um, when they come out, the, the first proofs come out, they're a little bit heavier, but again, it gives you a gauge, and obviously it'll be a lighter paper that we published. But um, I know they're out at the store that you can have a look at later on. But that's just an indication of um, how they look, and you can have a flick through the pages later on. But these are the, the chapters. So. You, I'll just point out, in Year 7, the only chapter that would be an O-book version would be the Ancient India. So if you were a teacher of Ancient India and you desperately wanted 
a hard copy version, then you probably want that history textbook which has all the chapters. But throughout the series here, the only ones in the red are the ones that are part of the ebook component. So you'll get everything, but just some chapters will be um, ebook only. But you can see the majority of the, of the chapters are published in the textbooks. So again, great value there. Again, using if you're teaching history and geography, semester based. Um, going through this option is, is a really good value. Uh, so straight textbooks for Year 7, 8, 9, 10 in Geography itself. Does anyone teach straight Geography for a whole year here? There's a couple of people. I know there's always a couple. Very lucky. I wish I could teach Geography and History for the whole year. But so again, the curriculum is so crowded. Um, so the key features of geography, I'll just go through a few things. There's a, um, we've kept um, a lot of the concepts and skills like the geography toolkit, which I'll talk to you about the history toolkit in a moment. Um, but it's certainly been updated for the Victorian curriculum. There's been some tweaks and changes there. Um, so the straight history textbooks, um, again, similar to geography, it's for the, for the whole year. But if you were wanting an ancient India hard copy textbook, um, this would be the... Uh, a chapter, the ancient India chapter, you probably want to go with this, shop, this option. And again, those are some uh, additions with the new content in year seven and year 10. And then uh, Oxford, big ideas, economics and business, the nine and 10, that, that's again, maybe for some teachers who would like to teach that. Um, but again, those chapters are in the year nine and 10 history and geography. So it'd be good to have those discussions in your faculty there about what's the best value for the student. Um, so the key features of this textbook here is a two year book. So they can carry that through uh, nine and 10. And I'll reiterate later on is that um, one of the great things, the digital license, it's able to be carried on. It's not like they have to repay every year. So I know some textbooks in the past, you would have to pay a new subscription every year, but Oxford have kept um, that license so it's ongoing for the life of the edition. So it is a case of a student could resell a textbook to a, a student next year and they wouldn't have to repay for that electronic subscription going forward. So it's all new purpose, uh, new content purpose written for new curriculum as well. So some key features of the Oxford Big Ideas. Um, so explicit focus on concepts and skills, and I know that you've got the handout there, which the sample chapters, um, you'll notice that regardless of geography, history, economics and business, civics and citizenship, the layout is all the same. It's that nice routine that goes through, and that's one of the things when I was working on Oxford um, with the chapter that I was um, going through, it's that nice consistency all the way through for the students. So whether they're uh, learning geography, it's that consistency all the way forward. So here's just some visuals. Um, again, if you use Oxford at the moment, you'd be aware of the layouts. So standalone concepts and skills reference sections for every humanities subject called toolkits. So we didn't have to keep those, but I think it's a really nice, especially like in um, the start of the year, having a toolkit in the history. Having, having that to um, introduce the subject is really valuable to the students going forward. Um, each concept is taught explicitly and supported with examples. Uh, this is the historical skills here for history. Um, here's a toolkit, which I'll talk about in a moment. Uh, process of historical inquiry taught explicitly. Skill drills provide step-by-step -step practice of most skills. Common problems and areas of confusion for students are clearly covered. Um, and again, at the end of each uh, learning outcome, there is this uh, rich idea or rich task that's there. And again, the, the layout's very similar to a geography or economics and business and so on. So rich task there, um, there's a skill drill, new skills are taught step by step and then applied. And again, they're reinforced in subsequent years. Um, extend your understanding as well. And. Uh, Obviously, that allows students to extend themselves. I just had a parent, um, end of last term, call me up and say, how are you extending my son? He was um, he, uh, benchmarked as obviously a high ability, and uh, it was a case of how am I extending his son? And you know, there was, I was doing the right thing. It wasn't anything I wasn't doing wrong, but she was just being a, um, a parent that wanted to follow her child's progress. 
But having these options of extend your understanding and so on gives that um, option. It's, it's easy to um, say that to a parent, these are the things we're doing. Of course, I do more than this as well, and Oxford provides that as well, which I'll show later on. So bringing concepts and skills to life. So this historic, this, this toolkit was, um, I came across the textbook last year and I opened up the page and was like, oh, as a history teacher, I'd love to create a toolkit um, according to this. And of course, I can't, you know, what's the relevance to a, um, a hammer and so on, although I probably could make some relevance. But um, I was also at a workshop last year. Sorry, I'm going to have a, a Phil Dunphy moment from Modern Family here. Um, but I, I saw a teacher last year and he brought out the, the, um, this black felt. I hope everyone can see that there. And then he got these white gloves out. And I was like, oh, you know, we were all like, going, what's he, what's what's he going to do? And I thought to myself, you know, my students would just lap this up. And again, it's probably more of a middle school thing. But um, I got the white gloves out with the sources. And, but then I was thinking, okay, what, you know, there's certain skills we want to teach in history. So I got these glasses and it was like interpretation. And I was like, okay, I'm teaching Mungo Man and Mungo Lady. I need to interpret the source, the document. So I put these glass on, uh, glasses on. I like to have a bit of fun. I put a wig on sometimes as well because <laughs> I don't have much hair, so I've got to play around a bit. Um, and then again, perspective. And if I was teaching World War I, I'd be thinking to myself, there's different perspectives of the war about involved. So I'll change my glasses here. So again, this is what I'm um, showing to the students in the introduction. So again, having a bit of fun there with these glasses, which will fall off on me now. Um, but then again, I thought any tradie needs a good tape measure as well. And I thought that's the easy part because I can do a chronology, a, a timeline here of um, my measuring tape here. So this is a, a, a timeline that I do and have, might have some sources from other teachers. Sometimes I'll team teach in our um, building so can lay out some uh, timelines there. And then of course, um, so again, I'd have that Colosseum there and I've got an old barbecue brush that I've got there and I'd, I'd brush off. But I have all the students all gathering around. So it is a bit of fun um, that try to incorporate into the classroom, but it was all inspired by just looking at one page of the um, Oxford Humanities textbook and going, okay, how can I bring this to life? So I'm sure you've probably got some better ideas that you can incorporate as well. I'd love to hear them. So that's that part there, sorry. That's, as I said, my Phil Dunphy moment for the evening. Phil Dunphy's a modern family. So um, this is a year seven textbook just to lay out ancient Egypt. And um, again, my school, like most schools, have gone down the path of visible learning with John Hattie, and we're doing our learning intentions, our success criteria. And I think when I was going through this, I felt that it really lends itself, these chapter introductions, to writing an easy learning intention. So again, I think that uh, for a, a, you know, time-poor teachers, you have that option there just to go straight to that and, and write that as a learning intention, and then obviously a success criteria through that as well. Um, so clearly labelled units and features, so this is just working through the, the, the chapter, so it's really clear for the students to come through, and also too for the teachers who might be taking your class if you're away. This just makes it all um, easy to navigate around. Uh, skills and concepts from the history toolkit, revisited and reinforced in each, each chapter. Um, Self-contained units of work, so again it just um, enables the students um, the teacher to plot out your uh, lesson planning. And uh, again, you know, the more I've worked with Oxford in the textbooks, just great visuals. And you can see there, that's a great um, illustration of how Egyptian mummies were made, uh, a lot of information there, but students love it and it's really clear and simple. And here is a, uh, a geography uh, page. So clear language. And again, I'm just saying what I said before. Uh, so this is going back to a textbook for Year 7, Ancient Egypt. And so that's to check your understanding at the end of the page. So there's under Bloom's taxonomy there, so catering for the range of abilities. So there's rem remember, understand, apply and analyse, evaluate and uh, create as well. So each of the, the mini chapters in the book have these... Um, check your understanding, and then they, at the end have that skills, um, the rich idea, the rich task. So now we're getting to the O-book, the assessment part component. 
And, and again, this is probably something that I feel Oxford, again, have lifted the bar and created a really great product and it's easy, it's easy to navigate if you're using Oxford at the moment. I, um, obviously in past years haven't used Oxford, but um, what I've looked at at the moment, Oxford have really got an easy, clear and easy to navigate around. Uh, student Obook provides complete visual fidelity with a printed student book and I'll just show you some demos in a moment of how that's laid out. So it makes moving between the print and digital products easy for, under, uh, for students. Um, so this is Ancient Egypt, a timeline. And uh, that, again, that's, that's a textbook. That's a hard copy version and that's the electronic version. So it is the same there, the layout. So it's really well presented. Um, each book is supported by thousands of differentiated self-correcting quiz questions. So a great for setting some homework or in-class use. Questions align to Victorian curriculum. Um, quiz questions are graded for different ability levels. So the support consolidated and extend. And this is again that opportunity for your students who maybe need that extension to um, have a bit more work in front of them. So again, that would be a, a page, the layout, how it would look. So you just support, consolidate and extend. So the layout's really simple for you to go through. Yep. I was wondering, does this assess section need internet um, to, to work or is it once it's on the, on the device to work twice? It needs internet, yes. Yep, it needs internet, yep. Um, and again, that's a page there where you can um, enrol your students and you can obviously see the score so it's all automatically marked for you as well. Um, digital support, teacher support. So there's lots of inf uh, resources there for you um, to, to go through. Um, so every unit is supported by some, some resources. So check your learning, there's answers to the questions as well. Whereabouts is, is that, like if you buy a digital subscription, yeah. you have access to that? Yes, so you would get a code and activate it, so you have your own account and you can log on and you'd have those resources there. So you don't pay more for that? No, no, don't pay any more for it, no. No, just to clarify, we don't pay any more for it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, answers for every unit. Um, so there's a class test, test as well. Um, multiple choice questions. So ready made, able to edit. And this is I was talking to you about um, also to just extend the students as well. So that there's some support worksheets for different students to differentiate. Um, so support, consolidate, and then extend worksheets as well. So um, again, for the students that need a bit more enrichment in the classroom, you've got those options. So there's, there's heaps of resources there for you. Um, so this is the teaching program and again all detailed the curriculum as well so a lot of work has been done for the teacher which is great um, and again additional resources as well so I, I think again you've really it's, it's a case of picking and choosing what you want out of it there so this is the, um, the dashboard of how it would look so the Oxford Atlas for Strength Christian Schools this is I suppose last year I was looking for an atlas. Um, again, we were using a, a digital atlas, which just didn't work. And uh, so when I arrived last year, I was like, we need a hard copy atlas. And when we we're looking at different atlases, the Oxford was the best one out there, I felt. And that's how I'm standing here really now, was because we got a sales representative in and started looking at Oxford a lot closer. Um, so a great Oxford, if you're not using it already, I would certainly recommend um, purchasing the, the Atlas. Um, and again, just some things here, Kim might reiterate in a moment, but students receive digital access free when purchasing print and digital. So there's no reactivation fees as well. I said for the life of the, sorry, for the life of the edition. Uh, schools who book list with Oxford receive free teacher copies and access to all seven to 10 resources. So I bet Kim might elaborate. And my intention, hopefully, We'll summarise the key uh, changes to humanity. So there are some changes. Um, they might be minor, but there are some changes going forward. But I think some exciting changes. And hopefully I've demonstrated that maybe a little bit about the, the big ideas, uh, humanities resources that can help your engagement in the classroom with your students. And some pricing, this is probably not my area, but um, I know that I think there might be in your handout there. 
um, some pricing details, but Kim, do you want to speak at all? If anyone's got any questions on the digital side of things or the sales side of things, happy to take those. Obviously, Christian can answer everything. Um, any logical questions? Yeah, I think the digital side of things is the biggest challenge for the business at the moment. Um, you know, if you're listing your seven humanities decks and you want to include an atlas as well, we can package up the textbook and the atlas at a special price for you. So normally you would purchase that for year seven and carry it through. Um, so just a special price. So you get the book and the humanities book and the atlas yeah. and the digital. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, all that books, the front cover of the um, textbook includes the digital code. With the atlas, that digital code is also ongoing for the life of the edition as well. So students can carry it through from year seven way, all the way through to year 12. So, uh, Humanities Book 6495, that's print and digital, uh, or just digital only, uh, 4495. Just keep in mind that's a subscription, so that's only for 12 months. So, in terms of value, um, the hard copy with the print is definitely the most value for money. What is the life of the edition? In part, how often are editions updated? Uh, usually three to four years, so it depends on the cost. BCAA changed the curriculum, but in general terms, three to four years. Okay, so. And how does that work with an atlas? Because normally kids, as you said, do have a concern as well. Yeah, so obviously, there's not an atlas that comes out in that time. So if, that if, a new, if a new edition comes out, then obviously, um, that's a good question actually, because I think with the current edition we are continuing, so I might need to come back to you on that. Um, but if they do keep it, or they do keep it from 7 to 10, sorry, 7 to 12, um, they can continue to reactivate their code. Or if they sell it and they change schools at year 8, um, then the new student can activate their code. Do you think it's even if the edition changes? Yeah, with Atlas, I'm not sure on that, so I might have to sneak out and double check that. But um, usually with the textbook, that's the scenario. New edition, um, then it stops, but the Atlas, you've got me on I think I, I, there was a question last week, similar, but um, I believe what was said that they will support, I mean, if a, if, a, if a new Atlas was coming out next year and you purchased it, or a, a new life, they'd still support that one for a period of time as well. So, I mean, my students uh, purchase this Atlas and they're gonna carry it all the way through into senior school. Um, so even if there was another edition, there'd be a period of time where that would still be supported. So. Is that with the Opal as well? I'm looking at, like, you've got a parent who's got a year nine and a year seven student. There's two years apart and it just happens to be a change just before the new year seven student. And it's slightly different. Could they then still reuse it even if there's an old edition but it's in the same family? Yeah, can you just give me okay. like five minutes after we go to the room? Yeah, I'll no worries. Because the Atlas is a little bit tricky. But as Christian said, we don't usually say how you want straight away. We usually do something like that. Anyone else with tricky questions? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so with students that have the um, Australian Curriculum textbook this year, even though the new Victorian one comes in, the Australian one hasn't been updated, so they can still pass along and use it for the use as well. And we had a number of schools that took up the Australian Curriculum books last year, mm -hmm. so they will obviously not want to have to change it necessarily for next year, so definitely will be some Do you need to purchase the Oval Consist? for teachers each year, or is that a rolling? No, it's a rolling thing, so once you've got it, it goes on forever. Yeah. And it's free of charge if you book this, or one purchase class set. If you only purchase one class set, and it's one um, free teacher resource, three class sets, three teacher resources. But if you book this, you've got seven teachers teaching in the many that you said, and we all have seven codes. And we obviously come out and train them as a few years, so many times. <coughs> Um, the Australian Digital Edition is, uh, digital will be ongoing, it was a new Victorian edition, which we put up, it's actually the first edition of the Victorian curriculum. So the Australian curriculum edition that we brought out two years ago is only up for the second year, so it will be on at least another four years. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So it's actually the new one's a different edition. I'm going to tell as well. <laughs> uh, I thank you very much for your time. I know it's a, um, an effort to come here after school on a Tuesday night. So thank you.